Jeffrey, and it is uh, a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship once again. I congratulate the Honourable Member for Mid Derbyshire uh, for bringing forward this important debate and for the passion that she shows for, Dar for both Derby and for its proud industrial and railway heritage. I congr congratulate, in fact, all the Derbyshire members are working cross-party uh, for their area to win this prestigious prize. Indeed, we've heard uh, very eloquently uh, from my right honourable friend, the member for Derby South. Uh, I know that uh, many of the other D Derbyshire MPs could not be here because of the late sitting last night, but uh, they too have uh, shown their support. And indeed, uh, it, uh, I think Derby uh, is very um, uh, proud and privileged to have the support of the former chair of the Transport Select Committee, uh, no less, and, and the former Shadow Transport Secretary, uh, my, right honourable, uh, my right honourable friend, the member for Nottingham South. Uh, and uh, amazingly, they have also managed to get support from Northern Ireland, uh, from uh, my honourable friend, the member for Strangford. So uh, I, I think the minister and uh, everybody at DFT uh, will be left in no doubt that uh, Derby has a very, very strong bid. Uh, and uh, indeed, the Honourable Member for Mid Derbyshire and my right honourable friend, the Member for Derby South, have rightly placed Derby within the centre of the history of the railway as a place where trains have been built since 1839 and as, and as a centre for British engineering excellence to this day. Indeed, uh, Mr. Effort, I was privileged uh, to visit Derby recently to see for myself some of that engineering excellence. Excellence, meet some of the workers and executives there and see their impressive work thanks to the Rail Forum and their, um, and their amazing CEO, Elaine. I even got to drive a train, Mr. Efford, uh, a first uh, for me in, in, in my lifetime. Subsequently, I had the pleasure of having a meeting with Councillor Baggy Shankar and the Derby Labour Group of councillors, wherein I heard about their strong support for the bid with intricate details provided by the senior council officers. A bid, as we have heard, supported by Alstom, uh, whom I also uh, visited, uh, and the Local Enterprise Partnership, the East Midlands Chamber of Commerce, amongst many others. In short, I am left in no doubt that Derby has made the strongest possible case uh, and put together uh, a very strong bid. Now, I must stop short, uh, as a Shadow Rail Minister, uh, of uh, making my own preferences known uh, or endorsing one particular bid, even, as, even one as strong as Derby, uh, before I get lynched by some of the other members uh, who have also uh, been on my case. Uh, the fact is that this is a very crowded and impressive field. I think this is a sixth debate, Mr Efford, we have had brought forward by a member advocating for their town or city. I understand that 42 places have submitted a bid by the time the deadline passed. So many of the places speak to the rich heritage of the railway across the country. Doncaster, York, Crewe, Darlington, uh, uh, and uh, Edinburgh, Swindon, Wakefield, uh, as well as many other wonderful places with a strong claim. But this... But despite uh, its amazing connectivity, for some reason, Slough, uh, 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 the incredible town that it is, didn't quite make the cut. But I did notice uh, Carnforth on the, uh, is on the list too, forever associated with Trevor Howard and Celia Johnson and their brief encounter. What the quality of the bids tells us is that there is a lot of love for, the, for rail and a vibrant railway manufacturing sector in our country still going despite every challenge and obstacle. There is an enthusiasm to design, to manufacture, to build, to create, to produce. We dig deep into our history. Stevenson, Trevethick, James Watt and of course the legendary Eisenbard uh, Kingdom Brunel, who built the famous GWR, which runs through my Slough constituency. But we need to look to the future too. I believe Great Britain can have a great industrial future as well as a proud past. It requires vision, investment and political will. The current government's industrial strategy, I feel, Mr Efford, is inadequate for the task still ideologically enamoured 
with free markets over long-term planning. If recent events, whether that's Brexit, the pandemic, energy prices, war in Europe, the climate crisis, prove anything, it is the need for government to work in partnership with industry to provide investment where markets fail, to provide strategic direction, planning and leadership. Uh, and on the climate uh, emergency in particular, we need to harness our engineering genius to the fierce urgency of tackling glo uh, global warming, carbon capture, renewable energy uh, and green manufacturing. And of course, the railway is central to this Green New Deal. High-speed links across the UK, including uh, the East Midlands to Leeds leg, which the government has unfortunately scrapped, but that's so much for levelling up. Electrification should be rolled out further and faster. Hydrogen power trains, like the ones pioneered and built in Derby. More railway freight and fewer lorries on our roads, as has been eloquently pointed out by honourable members today. More passengers on the trains across the timetable, reflecting the new changed realities of the world of work. I welcome recent announcements of cheaper fares for the next few, uh, for the next few weeks, and I hope it reminds people that trains can be a viable means of transport. But I can't shake the view that this is simply a gimmick. Wouldn't it be better if rail fares were affordable all of the time, as in many of our European neighbours? As the Labour Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, pointed out, a return Manchester to London train ticket bought on a Monday morning is £369. That's more than an advanced booked return flight to India, Jamaica or Brazil. That's absolutely ludicrous. Perhaps the Minister will update us uh, on uh, plans for reforms of ticketing and ticket prices uh, which have been promised for so, for so long and whether government plans will truly make rail travel a viable option for people uh, on middle uh, and low incomes. And that brings me to my central point, Mr Efford. We are discussing the headquarters for the new Great British Railways body, as established by the Williams Shapps Rail Review. Yet this new body is merely the guiding mind of a railway still dominated by private sector companies running those franchises. The new passenger services contracts will replace the emergency uh, agreements agreed during the pandemic. But those contracts are with private companies and their shareholders and investors. As long as the profit motive is a central part of running the railway, there will be a pressure for higher fares, more profits derived from the pockets of the long despairing travelling public. Perhaps the Minister can offer her assessment of how much cash franchise deals will cost the public purse for the first five years of the plan. The great missed opportunity, Mr. Efford, from the shock to the system which the pandemic provoked was to nationalise the railway in its totality, ending the franchises, putting people before profits, bringing our railways back into public ownership, owned by the people, accountable to government and democratically driven. A people's railway for all the people. This model, commonplace across the world, is what will guarantee recovery of our UK railways. In conclusion, Mr Efford, we need to keep down fares, speed up investment, boost green manufacturing and secure our railways for another 200 years. I wish the great manufacturing centre of Derby all the very best and I do hope that I will have the pleasure of visiting again very soon. Uh, I once again congratulate the Honourable Member for Mid Derbyshire and wish the other shortlisted towns and cities uh, the best of luck too. And, uh, and I hope that we have uh, a speedy decision as soon as possible uh, from the Department before we have uh, a further um, uh, such debates, no doubt, which will be called by various other uh, honourable and, and, and right honourable members for their towns and cities. But most of all, I wish for a clean, green, safe, accessible, reliable and affordable railway accessible for all. Thank you very much, Mr. Efford. Minister.